This book was a 10 out of 10 for me, and of the handful of 10s I've given on the channel, this one is the least well known. Now some of you may have already read it, but for those of you that haven't, my job today is to pitch you on it. So what book am I talking about? It's Permutation City by Greg Egan. Let's jump right into it, starting with the premise. Permutation City is the story of a man with a vision. Immortality, for those who can afford it, is found in cyberspace. Encompassing the lives and struggles of an artificial life junkie, desperate to save her dying mother, a billionaire banker scarred by a terrible crime, and lovers, for whom in the virtual world, love is not enough. So that is the setup for Permutation City. Now, who do I think will like it? I think this will appeal to people that are interested in cyberpunk, but are perhaps more interested in the cyber than the punk. A lot of cyberpunk kind of focuses on the dark worlds and characters that inhabit those kind of dystopian futures. And this book does have a few heavy themes and a few dark moments, but the focus is much more on the ideas, the virtual reality, the cyber world, its concepts and its implications. Another way of looking at it is that if you enjoyed the book Ready Player One or the TV show Upload, but you're looking for a story that dives deeper into the technology and pushes those ideas even harder, then perhaps Permutation City could be a good read for you. Now this is hard sci-fi, and if that's your jam, then I think this is going to hit for you. If that's not something that you typically read, I don't want to let that scare you away. Although, if you fall asleep by the time I finish saying cellular automaton, then this might not be a good fit, but I think even if this is a little bit out of your comfort zone, I really think you'll be rewarded by the ideas and the concepts. So what are some of the concepts that blew me away in Permutation City? Well, to start off, we have an interesting blend of virtual reality and artificial intelligence. And I was really impressed by how Greg Egan tackled these concepts from a technology point of view, exploring how these things came about and how they operate, but also exploring their personal implications for people. And I felt like Greg Egan really dug deep into these concepts and their effect on society. Just a quick little example. There is a company that wants artificial intelligence to be recognized or deserving of human rights. And so in order to try and achieve that, they create a sitcom with likable artificially intelligent characters in order to influence public perception on that concept. So just fun little things like that made me think that this book was really well thought out and it was a fun place to live in and explore. In the book, software simulations of a person are known as copies. And I found it so interesting to learn about the lives of these copies and see how they were either similar or different to those of their originals. And the environment in which the copies live is so real and the thoughts that the copies have are so vivid. At times, it was almost possible to even lose track of who is the copy and who is the original. Another cool concept explored in the book was the relativity of time. So for example, in some software simulations, because of the computing power required, time operates on a much slower scale. Uh, for example, one of the simulations is 1 17th the speed of standard time. So I found that really interesting to see how time would progress differently in one zone to another, and how that would affect things like communication and how you experience things and how you perceive your own life. When, for example, for you, two days might have passed, but on the other side, those two days were over a month. And that ties into the theme of immortality. Many humans go about their lives assuming they're gonna live for about 80 years. But if in this cyberspace, you could live for a thousand years, how would that change the way you go about things? Now think, what if you could live for a billion years? How would that change your day-to-day -day life as well? And just these concepts, these massive expanses of time, that the scale and scope in this book is epic, really made me start asking questions about humanity and questioning at what point are you even still human at all? And the last concept that I wanted to talk about that the book explores is diving into the assumptions of the universe. And this is probably where it gets the most hard sci-fi, really dives into some theory regarding mathematics, biochemistry, quantum physics. But what if we were able to break down the building blocks of a universe and then change them? What would we be able to do with this new universe in a way, and how would that affect our perception or understanding of the existing universe? 
Some of this stuff kind of went over my head, but it was really interesting just to think about, even just let little bits of it soak in, and I'm sure I'll be thinking about it a lot more for a lot, lot more time to come. So you might be thinking, okay, Jonathan, they sound like some cool concepts, but surely this hard sci-fi writer didn't write any good characters. Well, I'm not going to say that the characters were the best aspect of the book, but I did actually like them. I did become quite intrigued and invested by a number of characters in the story. I felt like each of the main characters in the book had a strong point of view or motivation. Now, at times it did feel a little bit like the characters were there to serve the concepts, but even when a character felt very strongly about a particular issue or took a side in a debate about a scientific concept or topic, that at least said something to me about the character. And another thing that I appreciated about the character development in the book was that in this world with some kind of crazy possibilities with this virtual reality and cyberspace, there were some characters that were very forward looking. They were obsessed with finding new technologies, new way of doing things, advancing themselves and society. And yet there were other characters that just couldn't let go of the past. They were stuck on things that had happened previously in their lives, the history of humanity, and that was what consumed their time and their energy and their focus. And so I really appreciated how the different characters kind of diverged in that respect. So you might be thinking, okay, Jonathan, it sounds like this book has some decent characters, but what about the writing style? Surely this hard sci-fi writer doesn't have the best prose as well. Well, for me, again, I'm not gonna say that that was the strongest aspect of the book, but I actually really liked Greg Egan's writing. If I were to compare him to some other fairly hard sci-fi writers like Arthur C. Clarke or Robert L. Forward, I would actually say that I liked Greg Egan's writing the most. And another thing that I appreciated was that for a book that was written in 1994, but is set in 2045 onwards, the language didn't feel dated when it came to the technological descriptions. If you had told me that this book had been written in the last few years, I don't think I would have noticed the difference. Now, if you work in computer science, you might laugh at that. You might have picked up on some things that sound a little bit more dated than I did. But I think for the average sci-fi reader, I think this is going to hold up really, really well. So you might be thinking, Jonathan, this book sounds too good to be true. You like the concepts, you like the characters, and you like the writing style. Well, what about the story? Does it have an interesting plot? Well, I've got to tell you guys, I finished this book in less than 48 hours because I could not put it down. I absolutely needed to know what happened next, and I thought Greg Egan masterfully set up a number of mysteries, solved those mysteries, and then quickly established a new one. There are so many cool story ideas in this book. I honestly think Greg Egan could have got about 10 different books out of the ideas in this novel, but he kept it all in 300 pages. He kept it moving. It reminded me a little bit of The Dark Forest by Si Xin Lu, book two of The Remembrance of Earth's Past. There are so many awesome ideas in that book, which I think could have been their own novels, and yet Si Xin Lu just kept on cranking out the ideas just like Greg Egan does in Permutation City. And I loved how many jaw-dropping moments there were in this book. I was amazed at how many chapters ended on an absolute bombshell. And usually reading is a somewhat intellectual experience, but I was actually getting physically excited to read the next chapter. I was pumping my fist, I was getting excited. I was honestly shocked by a lot of the things that were going on. And I don't know if I needed to mention that. Perhaps it's embarrassing to re reveal that I was pumping my fist while reading a book alone in a room. But I don't care. That's just how much I was enjoying Permutation City. So you might be thinking, I don't know, Jonathan, this sounds pretty good, but I'm not sure about hard sci-fi. Are you honestly telling me it's not confusing? Well, I will be honest, this is not the easiest book to follow. I didn't understand all of the biochemistry, all of the quantum physics, and some of it did go over my head. And if, if you feel the need to understand everything that you read in a book, this might not be the best fit for you. This probably isn't gonna work for everybody, but if you're able to just let some of it soak in, let it wash over you, have some things kind of be explained later on and some things, maybe you need to Google them afterwards. I think it's worth it because I think this has an awesome, awesome story to tell. And if you are into that kind of stuff, real kind of deep theory and accuracy and that kind of stuff, this is totally the type of book that you could spend a lot of time researching on. Greg Egan on, on his website actually has a Q&A because he gets all, all types of questions all the time. And I can imagine that this kind of attracts the, well, actually, 
type of personality. And Greg Egan kind of explains some of the explanations for the book and also admits that in some places, this isn't pure theory. I'm just telling a story. But either way, if you are willing to give some hard sci-fi a chance, I think it's absolutely worth it. So at this point in the video, this is normally where I would give my rating, but you guys already know, this is a 10 out of 10 from me. This instantly became one of my all-time favorite books. And if you haven't read it, I hope I sold you on it. If you had read it, you might be thinking, Jonathan, you said this might be the best book that I haven't read. I have already read it. Well, here are three independent books sent to me by subscribers that you might not have heard of. Starting with Arrival of the Gods by Adrian Hingert. Arrival of the Gods is set in the near future, five years after aliens find Earth, an event that initiated a peaceful trading agreement between the two civilizations. But half a light year from their home planet, the Marathi are not happy having only limited access to Earth's riches. Next, we have Dawn of Destiny by Lee Stephen. Scott Remington had a plan. God had a different one. Fresh off the heels of first contact with hostile extraterrestrials, Scott joins the fight to protect humanity, where one fateful decision on the battlefield can thrust him to the heights of success or plunge him into the darkness of doubt and disbelief. And lastly, we have Winds of Infinity by Jonathan Wiltshire. Daniel Robert Carter's life changes one fateful night when he discovers that he can slow time. He can also teleport or jump across the planet to wherever he wishes and not just on his home of Earth. So if you're interested in some independent sci-fi, check out the links to those in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. If you really enjoyed it, consider becoming a patron and you can be like these cool people. My robots, my androids, and my cyborg Nima. Thanks for watching, read Permutation City, and you can find more sci-fi content over here.